Hi, my name is Jonathan David Shepard. Um, I have schizophrenia. Um, it's uh, more specifically, it's schizoaffective disorder. And I was hospitalized a number of times. And I just wanted to kind of share my experience. Um, if anyone is about to go inpatient themselves or they're considering it. Uh, so yeah, let's just dive right in. Um, so what you can expect when you go there, um, if you're in a real crisis moment, um, you might be coming in through the emergency room. Um, if you have some one of your faculties about you, you might be uh, coming in um, just as a walk-in or something. Um, basically how it goes is uh, there's an intake interview, and this is just from my experience where I went. I'm sure a lot of people, or a lot of places do it differently, but um, generally speaking, there's an intake interview where they kind of decide, are you supposed to be inpatient for a week or for longer, or should it be outpatient? Or So they, they try to get you connected with the care that you need. Um, something that's kind of tricky is that you may be feeling like you have nowhere to turn, but you're not necessarily in such a crisis that they'll take you inpatient. Um, there are just a lot of imperfections that you might find. Um, as great as my care was and my the doctor I had um, the last time I went inpatient was absolutely wonderful. Um, but there are a lot of things to navigate and a lot of imperfections in the system for sure. Um, yeah, and so if uh, the conclusion of the interview is that you are going to go inpatient, um, a lot of interesting things that you might not have even thought of um, happen. So it's, it's like a ward in a hospital, so it's, it's a wing of a hospital. Um, so it's, the way mine was, it, it was kind of like a V and all the girls rooms were down one way and all the guys rooms were down another way. And there were maybe 25 of us there. Um, so in case this never crossed your mind and if some of this sounds basic, I'm, when you're really in the trenches with mental illness, even the obvious things aren't necessarily obvious, like 2 plus 2 is 4, you know, you can be in the trenches so deep that even basic things um, don't necessarily make sense like they should. Um, so, expect to encounter people who are having serious mental illness issues. Um, it's a, it's a controlled environment. It's very well controlled. Um, so there shouldn't be any physical danger. Um, if something crazy was going to happen, um, that will put you in danger. There are people there who are going to step in and intervene and make sure that everyone's safe. Uh, so that's a good thing. Um, no alcohol, no cigarettes, no drugs. Um place I went you couldn't even listen to music you could read books um, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's also um, controlled in some uh, some places out there um, I was able to read whatever I wanted and journal and that sort of thing um, and there's group sessions um, where they have different activities and that kind of fills your day you spend time in, uh, speaking with social workers, um, there will probably be one or two kind of head honcho doctors, <laughs> like people who are running the show, kind of behind the scenes, and they kind of rely on the nurses to make observations about how you're doing, um, and they'll usually meet with you, I think um, my doctor met with me once per day. I think, but, um, you know, they have a lot of people to take care of, so that might not necessarily happen. Um, you'll be trying different medicines, and that can be kind of a trip. 
um, to try different things. I know um, the antipsychotic I'm on now, uh, when I started taking it, um, for a while I had um, nausea uh, pretty bad. Um, gosh, what else? I had restlessness on a different medicine. So I, I tried a couple different medicines before I finally landed on the thing that worked for me. Um, yeah, otherwise, um, you, uh, I, <laughs> um, we weren't allowed to wear shoes. We had socks with padded bottoms and we wore those instead of shoes because I guess shoelaces and shoes could be used for self-harm or for harming other people. Um, the second place I went, they didn't have doorknobs on the doors. They had these kind of slanted handles, um, but they were slanted so that people wouldn't uh, be able to hang themselves from the doorknobs, um, which is kind of a horrifying thought that that would even be necessary, but I mean, that's kind of the domain of what's going on, so um, let's see what else. Yeah, so, I mean, coloring books, um, sometimes they'll have rec time with where you can play a video game, but it, it would be a video game like Wii Bowling, something, um, you know, kind of peaceful, fun, group building, um, yeah, um, and I mean, this all kind of depends on the resources of wherever you end up. What else? Okay. Um, we, uh, you are confined to the, um, to that ward of the hospital. So you can't go outside. You can't leave. Um, the, I believe that the law is a doctor can hold you against your will for 48 hours if they believe you're in a sufficient state of crisis. Um, but if you absolutely demand to leave, um, there should be laws that can protect you so that you don't end up, you know, imprisoned or whatever. But when you're in their care, um, they do have to control things. So even going outside, they had a little, uh, kind of garden walking path area and we could go outside, you know, twice a day something like that and just sort of walk around breathe in the fresh air um, yeah so things are controlled and that can take some getting used to I smoked um, I, like I was a smoker uh, when I went in and so fortunately they gave me nicotine patches otherwise it would have gotten real ugly because I was you know over a pack a day smoker um, I'm off cigarettes now though <laughs> so but anyway, um, let's see, yeah, regular meals, um, when I went in, I slept a lot, um, I think my mental illness really sucked up a lot of my body's resources, like my energy, um, so when I was finally kind of in that controlled environment, I just slept a lot. And they checked on me a lot because they're like, why is this dude sleeping so much? Um, but yeah, three meals a day. Um, the food is okay. You know, it's hospital food, but it's not too bad. Um, yeah, and so a lot of it is just trying to kind of work in... To work with people to develop more normal habits that will serve them well in the outside world. And that is eating regularly, sleeping regularly and enough, and being on whatever medication is going to work best for you if that's the answer. Um, sorry, I've got my notes here, I'm just trying to touch all the things that that I wrote down here, but like you can't go in another person's room, 
Um, obviously that can cause just a whole slew of problems. Uh, so you get your room. I got um, my own bed and my own shower, which makes sense that they would have that because, you know, people sharing a public shower could be humiliating or triggering or just all sorts of things. So, um, like I said, it, it depends on the resources that, uh, that your facility has. Um, but yeah, um, other than that, yeah, that's kind of just what it's like. Um, yeah, expect to meet some interesting people and it's, when it goes right, it's very beautiful and very transformative. Um, it's a, it's turning a page. It's a new beginning. And, um, ultimately you should leave feeling better. Um, but unfortunately there are lots of issues with resources and they can't always take people in or help everybody just because there's a limited number of um, people on staff and that sort of thing. So um, I would say this should be your last ditch effort. If you can handle life um, well enough outpatient, um, then you should. Um, but if you do really kind of crash and just are too deep in the trenches to get out yourself, um, then maybe impatient is the right way to go. And that's kind of what the interview is for. Um, they'll ask you if you take drugs, if you do this or that. They'll just try to assess where you're at and they'll have to make a calculation about uh, what the best course of action is for your particular case. Um, yeah, so that's uh, kind of some bullet points on what it's like. Um, just a couple notes of advice. Um, and this is not, this is just me as a person giving advice to another person who might be mentally unwell in the moment. Um, so to the person who's struggling, I would say... Um, take a deep breath and approach things reasonably and in moderation as best as you can. And a good place to start is gratitude. And that might sound a little weird, like why would you be grateful right now? But um, the people in your corner are the people who are helping you, your friends and your family, I would say take a moment to be glad that you have them. And to be glad that um, with all the imperfections in the mental health world, um, that there is help available. And I would say it's also good for a person to just approach life with a level of gratitude. Um, yeah, so I just want to speak that and speak peace to you. Um, There's a lot that I could say about things that I've learned along the way, but I read a book, um, I forget what it, Emotional Success, I think it's called, I forget who wrote it, but basically, um, going through life with emotional success, you want to have gratitude, compassion, and pride, and by, I know pride is kind of a loaded word, but, um, Pride in the sense of like, if you have a job and you do it well, feeling good about yourself for that, 
that kind of pride. I think that's very healthy. So even if you're really in it with your mental illness, um, try in moderation when you can. Try to remember um, the simpler virtues like gratitude and compassion. Remember that other people have their struggles. Um, do what you can to show an appropriate appreciation for the people around you. And with that, I mean, even with that advice, I'd say kind of give yourself some some space to just be a little bit out of your mind because you're not going to get everything perfect right away. Um, okay, so I don't know how much of this I'm going to cut, how much I'm going to keep. I'm coming up on 20 minutes here. Um, medicine. The topic of mental health medicine. Our culture does a huge disservice to mentally unwell, unwell people by romanticizing this idea of not taking medicine. And I want to blow that out of the water right now. When I started taking antipsychotics, gradually and with steady improvement over time, I became more compassionate, kind, humble, loving of others, grateful in every way, more connected with God um, in a healthy way instead of a religious delusion kind of way. And all of these things are what make up a good soul. So medicine really helped heal my soul. To say that medicine will damage your soul or kill your individuality or any of these other things, you should have an honest and sound conversation with the doctor. And you should trust your doctor. Not absolutely and not without also being involved and present about how you're feeling and what's going on. You've got to um, gauge yourself um, a lot of the time. Um, but generally speaking, um, trust your doctor. And if they prescribe medicine, take it. And I'm saying that because it can set you free. You might not even realize how bizarre your behavior has become because I'm, I'm saying that from experience, like I was out of my mind. Um, medicine can help. So take it. And it's not necessarily going to be easy. I mean, you may have side effects, weird symptoms. I like... I'm a, I'm a big guy, right? Like physically big. I've, I gained a lot of weight and that's because of the medicine I'm on. It messes with how my brain recognizes fullness, um, which leads to overeating without even realizing it. Um, and even with that, I would not trade my antipsychotics for the world. They saved my life. Um, and take the medicine as prescribed. Don't get it twisted in your head that you're going to feel better if you take more of it or less. Do, do it how your doctor says. Um, yeah. And be honest about whatever other substances you take or drugs or medicine you're taking. Um, that's a conversation to be had with the doctor, not with someone in Hollywood or whatever 
romanticizing mental illness. To the friends and family of a person who is struggling with this stuff, thank you. God is counting your good deeds that you do in secret. Thank you for having the love in your heart to take care of someone when you don't know how and when even when they don't appreciate it or recognize what you're doing. I know you've got your own life, your own problems, and we're all just trying to figure it out and then you've got this kind of mountain of problems that you don't know how to solve. Take heart. It will get better. Get help. Don't try to do it alone. And another piece of advice to friends and family is there may be moments when you need to advocate um, for the person who's uh, struggling. You might need to advocate for them because there are some um, situations that might not be the healthiest. Uh, one of the times I was hospitalized, my doctor said, essentially, I couldn't believe that there were such things as spirits. Which, to be fair to that doctor, um, that was part of my delusional thinking. So... He wanted to, you know, deal with that delusion. But in so doing, he bumped up against a huge range of um, belief systems that he just kind of closed the door on. And that was a bit of an overstep on his part, I think. Um, there are some mental health places that aren't managed very well. Um, I've heard stories... Um, I don't know how much this happens now. I mean, there's regulations and stuff, but, um, it could get to the point where sedatives are overused to handle people, um, in mental health facilities. Um, so I'm not saying that to scare you. And it probably in practice, there aren't anything, any really, really bad places that exist anymore. But I would say stay sharp and stay engaged and just make sure um, things are reasonable because you might be the only reasonable person in this situation. Okay, and I'm going to conclude with just a little bit about myself. Um, so I have schizoaffective disorder, which is schizophrenia mixed with a mood disorder. And... I was an alcoholic. I was an untreated, undiagnosed schizophrenic with alcoholism. And I was a nightmare. I was such a piece of crap to people. It's unreal. Um, but after a few hospital stays, I finally got on the right medicine. I take an antipsychotic, two antidepressants, and I take vitamin D. Um, and one, after I was on antipsychotics for a few years, I uh, got off alcohol. So I'm six years sober. Um, give that to God, because I wouldn't have been able to do it on my own. I'm off cigarettes. Um, I recently got promoted at my job. Um, I have a 401k. <laughs> There's hope. There is hope. Hardship may have come your way. It may be so that your mind is not on your side at times, but don't be afraid. You are on a brave and beautiful adventure with real consequence. Take heart, I believe in you.
Peace.